Hey everyone, you are live on Professor and Friends. Welcome to the show. with uh, Nathan Anderson, who is our photographer for the evening, and Bats Off-Road. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for having us. We got, we yeah, got a full house. Me. We've uh, had a, just a little bit of issues trying to get everybody on screen and trying to get everybody's <laughs> earpieces to work and screens to work, but you know, we got it. We got it. So, hey, here we are. Here we are. Thank you for joining us. We are going to talk tonight about the rendezvous and recap a few things about the rendezvous. And And I invited uh, John and uh, Tony and Arla to come on with us. And they have uh, graciously invited their wonderful daughter, McKenna, to join them on the show. Hey, McKenna, thank you for being on here. We're going to make you famous. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. And since um, we have the official... Uh, photographs from uh, Rendezvous. I wanted to invite Nathan, who took all the photographs, to come on and join us. Nathan, I appreciate you being here, bro. Yeah, thanks for having me. You oh. bet you. You bet you. Well, we've already got people in the house. Chad, thanks for joining us. Hey, and Chad. Uh, he's out in, I believe, is he in Kansas? I think Chad's oh, in Kansas. And uh, Misty uh, from the day we make is live in Arizona. Misty, I love the compost <laughs> toilet. Love the compost toilet. That's amazing. But anyway, um, I thought it would be awesome to have Bats Off-Road on here the week of Halloween. I mean, that just makes sense. <laughs> um, to have bats and Halloween, they just go together. And so uh, I just wanted to ask you guys, are y'all Halloween fans? We are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you do you dress up and participate and, uh -huh. and trick or treat and all that? Yeah. He likes to scare the kids around the neighborhood. <laughs> well, of course, that's what all dads do. Uh, that's you know, when 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 I was a young child, I used to get scared by by crazy old men and I wanted to be one. I was one of those guys when I grew up and now I am one. So scaring little children is like the best thing ever. The best. So, that's yep. what we do. That's what we do. So, McKenna, do you have a costume this year? Yes, I do, actually. What are you going to be? Um, it actually, it's a show that not a lot of people watch. Her name is Shinobu from Demon Slayer. You're right. I've never it's seen a, that. It's an anime. <laughs> okay. Well, well, you know, whatever you like. Uh, and I'm sure your friends will know exactly what you are. Um, and the crazy old men that scare you have no idea what you are. But that's okay. Uh, no big deal. Um, do do y'all pass out candy uh, to people that come around? Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Well, my uh, my I neighbor. The bushes. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, my my neighbor that uh, lives beside me, he called me. He said, "Hey, do you mind if we put some decorations up?" And I was like, "Sure, that'd be fine." And little did I know that he was going to go as far as he did. Some people just like over the top with Halloween. Um, but you know, that's, that's fine. That's cool because we turn our lights off and hide. Um, so <laughs> nobody will come because I work with children all day and, uh, and, uh, we usually go somewhere and hide and go to my dad's and, uh, and scare the children over there. So um, I think it's pretty cool that we're having bats off road the week of Halloween. I thought that was, I thought that was just genius on, on my part. So, um, it was. it was, I think it was, um, now, Tell me, uh-oh, here comes another trick, 
some more trivia. So, they were curious as to what was going on, so. Oh, hey, look, isn't that everybody right? Now. Well, you know, this is a kid's Hi. favorite show. Hi. 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 This is Kellen. Oh. And this is Lindley. Lindley. Kellen is Lindley. Hi, Lindley. And what's your son's name, Nathan? Where Kellen. Kellen. What? Nice to meet you, Kellen. Looks like they've had their baths. That's awesome. Yep, they just got out the bath. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that is great. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you all for joining us. We appreciate you all being here. Tell everybody bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we love surprise guests. Love surprise guests. Um, so, Tony, Arla, tell us where in the world did you get the name Bats Off-Road? Where did that come from? Well, so the that's my mom. nickname. That's, yeah, that's my nickname from a, a, since I was a baby. Um, it's a nickname that my mom and one of her friends gave me, Bassitter Belfry. Um, I get asked all the time because my tag, obviously, and nobody calls me that but my mom uh, any yeah. longer. But um, it is kind of embarrassing when she screams across the store when you're shopping with her bats, you know. <laughs> I don't yeah. know mom. But. Uh, well, I tell people it's because I'm a little crazy, maybe. Well, you know, um, I didn't, you know, we, we used to have a crazy old lady in my neighborhood when I was younger, and we called her an old bat. And, uh, okay. and I don't know if that was still used or not. So I'm glad that you got the name uh, a different way um, <laughs> instead of just maybe. being a, a crazy old bat. But, uh, you know, I think, it's a, I think it's very unique. I love the name, and I think it's uh, something that people, uh, you know, are attracted to. I think that's pretty cool. So we just got back from a pretty cool trip uh, to a place called the Rendezvous. This was the fifth year that we've had the Rendezvous. I believe that's that's correct. I talked to those guys uh, before the Rendezvous. It's been almost a month now. And it has grown exponentially um, in, in size. And I think it's it's really taken off. And Randy and and uh, Brad and the, and the guys. In fact, Brad is in the house. Brad? I uh, appreciate you being here. One of the, one of the uh, natural state overland guys. Um, and, and I think that rendezvous has been a go-to event for so many people. Uh, if you live in this area and people are traveling from several States, 15, 16, maybe 20 States, uh, Brad may be able to help us out with the numbers on that. Uh, but this year they broke another record over 700, uh, rigs with well over a thousand people coming and all of us that are here saw it from a different perspective um this is my first year uh brad says 24 states 24 states thanks brad appreciate that wow. um 24 states came to rendezvous in the ozarks this year so we, we saw it all from a different perspective this was the first year that i had ever worked in a booth the whole time up until this point, I had been just a regular attendee, uh, somebody who had just camped and went and saw the vendors and, and you know, sat around the fire telling more stories with, with buddies. Um, and um, Nathan, was this your first year to be the official photographer? Yes, this was the time that I've been the photographer for the event. Cool, cool. Well, um, so... Have um, Tony had y'all been to the rendezvous before? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah we've been uh, what three, three, three years? Three years, yeah, that was our third year. Third year, okay. Is this your first year to work a booth? I believe you worked, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. okay, so it was your first year to work a booth, yeah, yeah, for, for rendezvous, for rendezvous, right? Okay, mm -hmm. well, very cool. So, we all had uh, a different perspective once we got there. Um, now, one of the things that came up right off the bat was the weather. And um, everybody was like, oh, my gosh, the weather is supposed to rain the whole time. And there was even a rumor going around that the rendezvous had been canceled. And I thought, you know, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. We're overlanders. We camp. We go outside. There's always weather. Um, right. there, there's no way it was going to be canceled. Why would it be canceled? I just thought that was the oddest thing. And so, you know, I just thought, uh, I really don't understand 
why they would cancel it. And I made contact with Brad and some of the guys and they were like, no, no, we don't, we don't cancel for the weather. Sorry. That's just not something that we do. Um, but what were your expectations in coming this year since uh, all of us had been there before? Nathan, what was your expectations this year going into it? Well, like you said, I was the uh, official event photographer this year. So last year I brought my camera, of course, because I just love taking pictures. So I still took, you know, a thousand pictures or so. Um, but this year was the first year where I just got to kind of got to focus on walking around vendor booths, walking around campsites, classes and everything. That was my main priority and focus was just taking pictures all day. So I knew going into it that I was going to be walking a lot. I was going to be, you know, talking to lots of different people. And, you know, as a photographer, you kind of see things that other people don't see because you're constantly looking for a, a photo opportunity everywhere. So there would be times where I'm just standing out in the middle of this field, just doing circles, looking for things to take pictures of. And so you, you kind of get to see everything that, um, you know, if, if you're sitting at a booth all day or if you're camping or whatever, you, you may not see that. So going into the event, that was, that was something I was really looking forward to is, you know, seeing the whole event kind of like I did at Big Iron. That was really cool. Yeah. So, uh, Tony, what was y'all's expectations going into it this year? So, for for us, uh, you know, things for Bats Off Road have kind of changed 180 degrees from where we were in the past couple of years as just attendees. So, you know, we I, I've just found that I, I really enjoy meeting new people, uh, new friends. And, um, you know, so that, that was – you know, what I was looking forward to the most, which, you know, you don't get to go on the trail rides and stuff like that, but we, we enjoyed it immensely working the booth and, uh, you know, just seeing everybody come in and we, we met more people than we normally would as attendees, I think. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. McKenna, was this your first year to come or had you been there before? I have, uh, I've been here before, but this was my first time helping and working at the booth. Okay, first time helping working at the booth. Now I noticed that there was there was a lot of uh, there was a kid tent right in the middle. Did you go to the kid tent any at all? Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes. Was there what was in there? Because I wasn't allowed there allowed in there. I was too tall. So what what did y'all do? <laughs> so there was a game like flamingo toss. Uh, connect four there's this like paddle game where you throw like a ball at a velcro paddle and you got to mm -hmm. try and catch it okay that's cool and um from what i understand you did a few other things while you were there too um mm -hmm. i know you had some responsibilities in the booth that you worked uh but you also did some extra stuff i think i may have seen you carrying some firewood sometime yeah, I carried five loads of firewood. Five loads? Yeah, my Come hands on. were so blistered. <laughs> Child labor. Child yeah, labor. Other grown men there who wouldn't have done that. That's true. So, That's so true. John, John, when we got there and unloaded, John with Long Creek had, you know, those clear storage totes with everything, mm -hmm. all the teas and everything. And uh, so McKenna took it upon herself to go down there and load it up and haul it back, haul it back and <laughs> did it five times. So yeah. she, we were set for firewood. It got cold at night. <laughs> every night. It did get cold. Uh, the first night wasn't too bad. The second and third night, um, it the temperature dropped pretty good. Saturday night, it was really cold yes, uh, Saturday night. I got under the covers with no fan um saturday night and it was uh it was a big difference in temperature now um i think you mckenna i know you i know you know this person that has said hey to you on the screen uh he's a humongous ugly ugly fella um, real ugly got a humongous beard um mason berry now now have you have you done anything for mason and blue line overland yes absolutely so what i did so I went around with some of my friends that I just met. Their names are Keith and Ray. 
they are so awesome. So we went around like donating a bunch of stuff from Long Creek Overland, Fats Off Road, more Max Tracks, a mm -hmm. lot of stuff. And we sold that stuff for cheaper than it usually would be. And we put that money towards Blue Line Overland, Shop with the Pop. And we just had a lot of fun overall. I remember you coming by. I remember you coming by. Y'all had a sack full of stickers and patches and all kinds <laughs> of other stuff. Yep. Um, asking for donations. And, and, um, and also you said, well, you can buy some stuff. And uh, give us some money, and we'll give that to help kids um, have a better Christmas. And I, mm -hmm. I think that's so cool uh, that you did that, took out of your time to, to do that. Now, now the, the cool thing about all of us being here um, is that all of us had a role in some kind of way uh, for Rendezvous uh, this year. Y'all worked at the Long Creek um, Overland Tent. Um, and Arla, every time I went by, you were in there just – go into town and uh, every time i turn around uh nathan was taking a picture of something you know making me look fat and uh did a great job with that um and, and i worked at the artemis booth and i pretty much cooked the whole time um we cooked all the time and i made sure that nathan was fed and happy oh, that yeah. way he took good pictures of us and uh it was it was so much fun so much fun. Oh, oh, and we have uh we have incoming. This is world premiere right here. World premiere. Mason said that they've raised seventeen hundred and fifty nine dollars so far this year. For oh, South yeah. So that's pretty awesome for what awesome. you what you kids have done. That's that's probably awesome. With Big Iron and Rendezvous. Together. Big Iron and Rendezvous. Yeah. 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 That is incredible. Incredible. Um, so that's that's pretty cool how all of us had a different role, but yet um, it was an amazing event and it was, you know, not canceled. It was carried on. And in spite of everybody saying, Hey, it may take place. It may not. People showed up and showed out and everybody had a great time. And I want to talk about every little piece of what we took in and we're going to show some pictures that Nathan took, but right now we're going to pause for station identification and thanking our sponsors for the show. Stay <laughs> Hi, I'm Barry Henderson with Tailback Trailers. I'm Adam with Oki Overland. This is John with Long Creek Overland. I'm Drew with Rock Squash Design. I'm Casey with U.S. Action Track. Hi, I'm Joe. And I'm Misty from the day we make. I'm here with Dustin Ogg from Oakley Overland. Hi, I'm Jeremiah from Overland Pioneer. Hi, we're Jessica and Jorge from Woodward Wonder. It's Chris from Moore Expo. And I'm Misty from Lady Overlander Radio. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. You're watching. Are watching. And you're 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 watching. Professor and friends. Professor and friends. Professor and friends. Joey the professor and friends. Professor and friends. Professor and friends. The professor and friends. Professor and friends. Professor and friends. Sponsored by More Expo, April 8th through the 10th, 2022. Linson Solar. U.S. Action Tracks, Big Iron Overland Rally, Artemis Overland Hardware in Springfield, Missouri, Blue Cell Coffee Roasters, and Long Creek Overland Apparel. Thank you for sponsoring our show. I want to thank everybody for taking time out and uh, giving me a few bro poses and uh, offering to do an intro to the show. That was, that was so much fun, especially getting the Sasquatch in there and... Uh, I just had a great time with that. So when did when did you all arrive to the rendezvous? So I got there Wednesday night about seven thirty, just in time for the the this guy's to open them. Yeah, <laughs> and I I brought the trailer with me uh, because the the plan was they were going to sleep in the trailer and I was going to sleep in the tent on the gladiator, and I, I just got there and kind of over. I shoved everything to one side in the trailer and I just I crawled in and waited for Jared and Kayla to come down. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they luckily whenever they got there, it stopped raining for a little bit. They could kind of get out and get settled in. And then yeah. we went to bed. Cool. Nathan, when did you arrive? I got there Thursday about noon. I was supposed to arrive Wednesday night. 
But one of the downsides of renting ones is, is you are at the mercy of FedEx. Oh, yeah. So uh, FedEx didn't deliver the one of the lenses that I rented until Thursday morning. So I didn't get to leave oh, okay. town. And uh, I live four hours away. So I got there about noon and set up and hopped right into taking pictures. Huh. Well, cool. Well, I got there. I came up real early. I had taken an extra day off, and this was the first time that Rendezvous had started on Thursday um, instead of Friday. And 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 so being up there, I needed to be up there and help set up. So um, Aaron with Artemis and Matt uh, pulled in with his um, with uh, with the trailer and stuff. So I got there Wednesday morning. It was just beautiful. I mean, it was beautiful. Uh, time I rode with my windows down all the way there. Uh, went and some of my buddies had set up and had coffee uh, ready. So I sat around and I got there about 9 30 or 10 and had coffee with them. And, and then Aaron and them rolled in about two. And as soon as they pulled the tent out of the trailer, it started raining and it rained and it rained and it rained and it rained. Now Wednesday evening really wasn't that bad. It, it thundered, it lightning, but there was no wind. And so it actually wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. Um, and so, you know, I've got a hard shell rooftop tent and hearing that room, that rain come down on that, on the aluminum roof made me sleep like a baby. I mean, I slept good Wednesday night. It was great. Had both my fans going. I slept like a newborn. It was unbelievable. <laughs> nice. now, I can't remember. Uh, Thursday, uh, we get up and um, people are just rolling in. It's just raining and raining and raining and i've got a i've got a picture here that nathan took of the line of cars coming in uh it was just yeah. one car after another after another after another and i don't know if you can see them way back there in the back but i mean they're doing everything they can to get people checked in mm -hmm. and to get them with their um you know with their camping spots take their money whatever but I mean, just cars, one it was coming in right after another, and it was just raining and raining and raining and raining. But we had people come by the booth. It was crazy. People were coming by the booth, and we started, we cooked breakfast, and, and Wes cooked lunch, and people just kept coming by and kept coming by and kept coming by. And I think Thursday during the rain was probably our biggest day of selling stuff. And I was just shocked. I just couldn't believe it. But I mean, it was it was such a crazy day because people were ro rolling in, vendors were coming in and setting up, um, and it was just kicking off. And I went over and I talked to we're having I some talk audio issues here. Okay, can you hear me? You sound like a robot. Yeah, you yeah. sound like a robot. I sound like a robot. <laughs> well, it's probably this crazy thing they call the internet, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but uh, hopefully it'll get better. I know y'all live in the boonies. Uh, that's probably probably why you're looking at me all weird. I still Is it got working? You. you still got me, Nathan? So, so, Nathan, you show up on Thursday. Did you go? You went out in the rain and started taking pictures because I got some of the pictures that you took on that Thursday, and it just looked like misery. Here, let's see if we can swap. Yeah. So I would just hop around. One thing about overlanding is everybody's got an awning or a tent or a, a pop-up canopy or something. And so I just hopped around from awning to canopy to the little kids section and just put on my lens and zoomed in on everything. And I just, you know, tried to capture, because I didn't want to just not take pictures of all that because that was still part of the event. Like you said, you can right. look at these pictures the and there's still people at, at every booth. Yeah. So yeah, there was nobody was, there just was hunkered down in their tent or anything. Yeah, you're 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 right. You know, people were still there and they were still um, out doing whatever that they were going to do, but they were undercover. You know, they were um, just just trying to make the best of whatever situation that they were handled handed, and um, and so. Uh, how did it go for y'all, um, Tony? When when y'all were setting everything up, did the rain affect you at all? Well, uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, we had to make sure that we didn't get the, you know, the transfers wet or the, you know, the, all that kind of stuff. So we kind of had to keep an eye on it and make sure, you know, 
everything was it was staying off the ground, so to speak. That because I mean, it was just coming at you from every direction. It seemed like yeah. <laughs> the wind, the wind, you know, would blow uh, down on one side or another. It's yeah. Thursday, Thursday, I remember the rain stopped for a little while, and then the wind. Uh, we went from being hunkered down underneath the tent to everybody being on a pole trying to hold the thing down. Right. I mean, it just, it was crazy, the wind that came up. So Thursday um, morning when that tornado warning came through, it was me and um, me and John and I guess it, it yeah, and Jared, we were all under our awning trying to hold, hold it down and also keep the water draining off. Now, I, now I, I was going to ask you all that because I had lost track of days. We were there and it rained every day, so they all kind of ran together. So was it It was Thursday morning that the tornado came through? Yeah, Thursday morning about 5.45 or so. Is yeah, so I, I, was, I woke up to the sound of thunder, and mm -hmm. uh, I had my windows open because it was nice outside, and I remember this thunder. And I've lived in Arkansas long enough – to know that if it thunders and it never quits thundering and it's just one solid thunder after thunder after th that's bad. <coughs> Man, that's bad. And so I, th I remember waking up and hearing the thunder and I looked out my window to the West and, and I saw the lightning and I thought, Oh, this ain't going to be good. <laughs> and, um, you know, we didn't have very good cell service at all. And so I got up and made sure everything was tied down. And then people started getting up because I, I think they heard the thunder. And um, Aaron from Switchback came over and Adam from Oki Overland came over. And they're like, hey, man, have you, have, have you seen the weather? I'm like, we don't have no service, man. Hey, can you see the weather? Um, but then we didn't have no service. And all of a sudden, all of our phones went off. Right. And I'm like. That's that's some that's some government stuff right there. They I right. knew they could get right. in touch with us. I right. knew they could get in touch with us. And then yeah. and then I just decided I'm not getting back in up in that rooftop tent. I'm not doing it because it said tornado warning. And so I got in my driver's seat and I was like, well, it's almost six o'clock anyway. I might as well just sit up and play on my phone. And I mean, it it felt like about 10 seconds of straight line winds came through, blew the awning completely off of my vehicle and slammed it down next to it. The poles went flying over by Bison Overland's truck. And then the Artemis tent just collapsed. And then it was over and then it just started raining real hard. Yeah, well those, uh, those lines after they came through your tent, your camp, the straight line winds, they came right through ours. And yeah. the action tracks canopy that was right next to the Gladiator, it yeah. just, it just, flipped up and turned over and landed on its top right behind the gladiator between the camper between the camper and the gladiator. Yeah. It was, wow. it, was it was it was a pretty scary 10 seconds, that's for sure. Uh I didn't know what was going on, but I felt pretty safe. I felt I felt my tent fall. Of course it falls for anything. Um so <laughs> it, it, it real, I knew that was gonna happen. Um so if you have a free spirit um evolution tent, just get ready. It's gonna fall. Um, so, um, but where were, where were you at Nathan during all this? Uh, I'm pretty sure I was probably, I think you were still at home just you? sitting there. Were you, were you still at Thursday home? Morning, yeah, I was Thursday morning. I was driving. Yeah. Okay. So you were driving. Did you run into any bad weather at all trying to get there? No, I, it really wasn't that bad on the way there. Cause I come from the East. So the weather was coming from the West and. I didn't really hit any rain until I got there. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, it was, it was a pretty scary time for a little bit. Um, it was, um, I think uh, it rained real hard for about 15, 20 minutes or something like that. And then I just got, I said, forget this. It's still dark. It's going to be dark for a long time. I can't do nothing. So I just got out, pushed my tent back up and I got back into bed yeah. and uh, went back to bed for a little bit and, <laughs> Just stayed there until about 8.30. I heard people stirring around, and I got up, and we – we, I think there was about 35 gallons of water in the roof of the Artemis tent. And so we had to dump all that out and try to put it back up, straighten it back up, and it was still raining. Um, didn't even bother putting the awning back on my vehicle. It was Everything I had was just getting soaked, and I just was okay with it. And, you know, because just – I mean, what can you do? 
Right. Um, but did y'all have any of your of your stuff get wet at Long Creek? Uh, a few shirts. A, a few shirts. I mean, there was a couple of leaks, I guess, but uh, it, it wasn't bad. Nothing was. Nothing was, you know, too bad. That's good. We got lucky, I think. Yeah. Well, you know, you um, uh, one of my favorite sayings I, I picked up from Clint Eastwood way back in the day was improvise, overcome, adapt. And, you know, we knew it was going to rain. Uh, we knew we, this was this was a good chance of happening. And we just said, hey, this happened. We'll just fix it. Move on. So we put the tent back up, made the best of it. And then, you know, people came out a little bit, but not very many people came out that Friday. We didn't see very many. Did y'all see very many at your booth? Friday was pretty steady. Friday was Good. Busy. We got we didn't get there. McKenna and I didn't go in until about one o'clock on Friday. Um and it was pretty busy. I got I got a great picture that Nathan took and this was the aftermath of the storm. Yeah. Um this was the the main walkaway where everybody was walking and the kids just made the best time of it. Um <laughs> you know, no shoes. Uh, don't really care how many changes of clothes they brought. Um, they were going to get muddy. And, you know, Aaron's son, Kelly, was out there, and he was mud from head to toe, and they just had the best time. And uh, I love it, you know, getting kids out there, doing their thing, and uh, just having the best time. That was uh, – I know uh, that that afternoon uh, when you got there, Nathan, you just, just immediately started taking pictures and uh, caught the aftermath of all that that was – that was happening. Oh yeah, there was a lot of people either ducking into their awnings, trying to dry stuff out, and there's all kinds of kids just running everywhere. You know, they're yeah. with all the mud. I remember yeah. now Some it of them was were like rolling around. Yeah, yeah. I, re I remember now it was Chad, Chad Clifton, and Jared were under my awning trying to help me keep it anchored down. <laughs> Chad, I would, Chad got there late Wednesday night, and I, I I tried to stay awake for him, but the the rain the rain put me to sleep in the camper. I was just sitting there, just and anyway, I never even knew he was there until I got up with the storm. Now, um, now I wanted to ask uh, one of the things that that uh, that Tony and Arla and I did not get to experience because we were camped. Um, up in the vendor area, Nathan, you were camped out in the primitive area. And I remember asking, uh, or just in my head saying this, the line for getting in hasn't slowed down. Where are they going to put all these people? And uh, I know it got crowded. How crowded was it over in there? Cause I don't even know if I, I made it over there. Um, after, after Wednesday, um, uh, was it, was it crowded? How bad was it? Yeah, it was pretty packed. Just about everywhere you could park a vehicle, there was something there. All the way past the bathrooms, all the way down to the airstrip, that big circle down there. I mean, it was totally packed. And then nice. even like where the vendor area used to be, back right. where that little stage is, there was people camping there. And somebody even set up a, a ground tent by the rock garden, like in that area there. Oh, wow. And then I didn't even go down to the other side of the property where yeah. all the night owls usually camp. But that, that was that was a whole nother mess down there. But so so driving the, down the road, so, you can see that there was still a whole bunch of people down there, too. Yeah. So the side that you were on, was that the quiet side or the party side? That was supposed to be the the quiet family <laughs> side. It's, it's usually the, the, supposed to be. the family yeah. side until about, you know, 11 o'clock or midnight or so. And then it kind of tapers off. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I, it's probably a good thing that you were on that side because everybody on the other side had a lot of problems with all yeah. the rain. Uh, they were getting stuck in the middle of the road. Um, yeah. And we're, we're not talking... RVs with street tires. I mean, we're talking four wheel drives with mud tires getting stuck yeah. and uh, ended up being a pretty big mess. Uh, in fact, Tony and I were there last weekend again. And when I pulled in, when I came in from the cast side, you could still see the road was nothing but mud all the way down yeah. through there. It was crazy, crazy.
Yeah, I, I was just wondering about the the camping because I, I I thought to myself, where in the world are they going to put all these people? And uh, I began to think. I wonder if we have outgrown this place. I wonder if we have outgrown birds. I don't. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. It was it was it was pretty packed down there, but I think everybody, especially you know, overlanders, are usually pretty welcoming people. Um, yeah. So you know, nobody's gonna you know spread out their hundred by hundred area and take up you know as much room as they can. Usually, you know, you pop up your tent, maybe put up an awning or whatever, and then you leave room for the next person. So it yeah. was it was packed down there, but you could tell that everybody was still making room for each other and making sure everybody had a place to camp. Well, that's uh, uh, I just I just remember so many people, and and yeah. you know, and, and it's really hard to get an idea yeah. of how many people that there are there because there's only one time where everybody comes to the event place, yeah, and that's the very last thing. So you really don't get a good idea about how many people are there until the event's almost over. Yeah. If you never venture out into, into all the campsites, but I did one time um, i had had enough and I couldn't take it anymore. And I just had to jump on Rhino's bike and ride down to the bathroom, the real bathroom and, um, and uh, you know, do my business down there. But I, I rode around down there and I, like you said, Nathan, there were people camped on that road. And I've yep. never seen people camped on that road before, the road to the bathroom. Right. Um, I just thought that was odd. And I, then I just crossed my mind, they may be completely out of room. They may not have a place to go. I don't know. But uh, that was one of the advantages that we had camping up in the vendor area because, you know, we had we had space. And, and uh, we didn't yeah, – I, I mean, used to, you could get there on Thursday evening or a Friday – and you'd find a spot pretty easy, but this year that was not the case. Yeah. So that's that's one of the things that, that has changed about this event that people need to keep in mind for next year. If it starts on Thursday, you might want to come on Wednesday and yeah. um, and and take time. So um, Brad says that's a great part of the event. There are a lot of people, but until the door prize part, they're not all together at one time. That's true. Uh, that's very true. Um, now, I know Tony Arley, y'all were y'all were camped out at Long Creek for for a pretty good part of of the time. Were all were y'all able to walk around and uh, see uh, other parts of the uh, like take a look at the other vendors or or do anything like that? Were you able to get away at all? Yeah, we did uh, here and there. We didn't go together. Uh, there was there was always you know enough people uh at the booth to you know we, we we just couldn't go together but we would go separately and kind of venture out and meet and look and run to the restroom so to speak and all that kind of stuff but Fr finally on friday i was able to get away and um get over to uh the the rock squatch designs and see my good friend Jeff from bad act adventure co and spend yeah. some time with him and, and, uh, Adam and, and, uh, uh the guys from Oki overland, it was, it was kind of funny. I tried to get Kayla to do, uh, uh, to come in on the video. And as you might've seen, she just stuck her tongue out at me. That's all she did. But, <laughs> uh, and, and Dustin Og wouldn't even try. Uh, they said, no, I'm not, I'm not somebody that gets on the camera. I said, well, guess what? I'm going to put you on the camera anyway. So I did all the talking and just put him in there. Uh, so <laughs> I, I was able to get away and, and see a few people, Chris, for more expo. Oh, and shout out to Chris for buying all the wood um, yes. and donating all that. That was super cool for him to do that. Uh, he sponsors the show and I want to make sure and throw that out there, but uh, that was awesome. And, and what was funny to me about that was he, people didn't really get a lot of wood until Friday because it wasn't really cold. And then when it got cold on Friday afternoon, people started making a beeline for the wood pile. Yeah. And uh, I was really glad we had some wood because, um, you know, when it turned off cold Friday and uh, Saturday, that was really nice to have. Now yeah. tell me about your campfire time. I know y'all spent some time around the fire, uh, got to visit with everybody. That's usually one of my favorite times. I know uh, Nathan, uh, is world famous for his cooking and he made some deer chili 
uh, that and everybody yep. was talking about how good that was. Did y'all have some good fire campfire time at the yeah, rendezvous? Yeah, we did. We did. You know, Thursday, as far as I remember, we didn't even make a fire because uh, it just wasn't that cold, like you said. And yeah. then Friday night, we uh, whipped up some deer chili. I've actually got the the pot right here. This is a, a 16 quart pot. Good Lord. And we oh, it yeah. all the way up to the brim. Oh, How many hundreds yeah. of people did you feed? Well, we ended up only having like 20 or 25 people. So <laughs> we had quite a bit. You had a lot left over. over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to bring a lot back home. So got some in the fridge. But yeah, we had a great time. And we, uh, you know, my friend Matt, he uh, turns 50 this year. So we had him a little mini birthday party there at camp, which was real special. Um, just a time for everybody that was there. And we had some OARC pie. Kara got some OARC pie. It was just mm -hmm. awesome. That was a really good time. Yeah. Anytime, awesome. anytime spent by the campfire is uh, something that you cherish. It's just, it doesn't hardly get any better than that in my book. Yeah. You're right. You're right. That's, that's the time when you let your guard down and get to know everybody. Cause, yeah. uh, you know, when uh, when when people feel comfortable and they feel comfortable around you, they start sharing uh, the the good stories, right? And uh, and you start learning a little bit more about who people are. And I, I love that time. Uh, we had we had time like that. Um, we actually uh, did some uh, some Dutch oven cooking and had some desserts late at night, and uh, you know, smoked cigars and and uh, had a great time around our place. And I, I just love that time. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm with you, Brad. I hate that I miss Matt's birthday party, but right? I know where he lives, so I can roll his house. And uh, yeah. and uh, and I and if anybody wants Matt's address, uh, just message me, and I'll send it to you. And all you have to do is go ring the doorbell. That's all you have to do. Uh, that's your only assignment. Just um, I promise you, if you go by at night, his his garage door will be open because he always forgets to shut it. <laughs> Just pick out of there whatever you want and ring the doorbell. It'll be great. Yeah, um, we we uh, I I would be remiss if I didn't mention Jared and Kayla. They they fed us really good the whole time. The whole time. I mean, we uh, I mean, I think we had uh, some kebabs that were just yeah. amazing, and Chicken some cool pork sliders and. I mean, breakfast burritos, breakfast burritos, they made pre-made breakfast burritos and we just heated them up in the oven or on the, you know, on the grill or something. They were, it was, we just ate very well. So big my wife, the, my they, wife always says we eat better when we camp than, when, than we do at home. And then I take offense 100%. to that because I cook in both places. <laughs> oh. um, but, um, you know, we do. <laughs> I do, I do concentrate because I, I love the, uh, I love the, the cooking out in the, out in the wild. It's, it's just one of the things that I just absolutely love. I think I've spent more time on creating my kitchen setup than I have on my suspension setup and tires and everything else, because that's just what I love to do. It's, yeah. it's, uh, you know, and Jeff says, yeah, that's right. You can't go to birds without going to Oark and getting some pie. And Absolutely. Kara came by the Artemis booth. And delivered, hand delivered us some pie. Oh, wow. and, uh, oh I got a bone that check. That was, <laughs> that was amazing. In fact, Kara and Matt came by and said something about wrapping pie in bacon. Nathan, did you do that? Did you did you did you get some of that? Tell us about that. That was kind of an invention that uh, Matt and Chad and uh, Matt Fry came up with. I believe it was Saturday morning. You know, we had we had, had all that pie left over from the night before, and I was making bacon that morning, and it was all sitting there together. And Matt grabbed some bacon and grabbed some pie and put them together and came up with a masterpiece. They said it was pretty what? good. I didn't get to try any, but so what kind of pie was it? Was good. I believe it was apple pie, apple pie, apple pie and apple some uh, some of that big thick European bacon. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, that's what he says. Apple pie and bacon is so good. I, I agree wholeheartedly with Paris. It, it had to Paris be good. Uh, I can't imagine, and I'm definitely going to have to try that. I'm going to have to try that. That's, uh, I'm going to have to add that to my list. So um, Friday came around. Everything cleared off. The weather cleared up. 
Uh, it seemed like everybody was in much better spirits on Friday. Um, everything was starting to dry out and, um, and everybody was getting out, moving around. Um, Wes brought out this pork, pork jowl bacon um, that oh, I had yeah. never seen or tasted or cooked before and uh, actually had to cut it. I've never had to cut bacon before. It's always been cut for me. And um, he, he accused me of cutting it with a chainsaw the first time I cut it. So I had to do it. <laughs> And yeah. so we cooked that on the scottle and had that for everybody. And then uh, I believe we made um, uh, some Philly cheese steaks and handed them out for lunch. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a great time, you Sounds know, and terrible. it was, I know it was, it was horrible. It was a horrible time. I had a little bit uh, of it all. In and eating. Man. Yeah, we, we didn't get to uh, visit with you guys as much as we wanted to. but no. uh, And I did hear about the whiskey, and I still didn't make it over there. Uh, you know, that's, that I don't think I even got any of that. Um, Wes made some kind of a something every day, and people were coming by saying, where's this concoction that you made? And uh, I thought that was fun. Everybody was, you know, nobody bought anything, but everybody wanted to come <laughs> and get the thing. So uh, it, was, it was fun, and, and seeing... Um, that you know every, everybody come by and, and just being all happy and and uh saturday was just one of the most beautiful days it was just yeah. an, a magical yeah. beautiful day and yeah. i didn't care if anybody came by the booth or not i mean I, that was the day i just wanted to enjoy myself and fortunately most everybody had already came by our booth and bought everything that they wanted the days a couple days before and so we just got to talk to people and that's what i love doing People coming about and saying, hey, what's this? Or looking at something on the FJ and saying, you know, this is awesome. How did you do that? How long have you been building that? Or or just visiting with people uh, was one of my favorite times. Did, did, did you all get to do any of that? Did you meet anybody new that you that you didn't know before? And did you make any new friends? Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, I got to meet Misty. Um, Joe Misty. Yeah, fries on the side. Fries on the side. Yeah. That was uh that was a that was a beautiful time. There was a lot of um Nathan actually caught some of the the classes that were going on. I didn't get to attend any classes, but there was classes of all kinds. Um there was meet and greets for the females. Um there was kids um classes where they got to do, go and do crafts. I think Misty did a kids crafts. Um, and for those of y'all who don't know Joe and Misty, they're from the day we make, they're full-time overlanders. Um, and they have three kids of their own and I don't know how they do it. It's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. Um, but they do it and they do it well. Um, this, I love this picture. Uh, Nathan, you, you caught us. This was, uh, Matt and myself and Joe and, uh, somebody else. Oh, oh that's, um, Jeff with Badak, Badak Adventure Co., we got the moon shade on and came in and, and uh, Matt wanted to put it on his new gladiator. So this was Thursday, uh, right after it quit raining. Uh, it was early in the day. We put the moon shade together. We didn't read the instructions, of course, um, but we put this thing together and we stuck it on his, uh, stuck it on his Jeep. And he was like, man, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And then I jumped on the bicycle and went down to the bathroom and came back. And when I came back was when that wind started and that moonshade had yeah. twisted and flew everywhere. Cause we didn't, apparently we didn't have it staked down very good. And yeah. I've, I've got a version. I've got a version of that uh, moonshade and it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't like, like wind. wind very well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah. I, that's the first time I'd ever seen one and the magnets looked like they were just, crazy cool um i thought it was a great setup and um and I, I thought it was amazing but um um tell us about nathan tell us about walking around taking pictures um uh, tell us about your experience doing that and, and uh and what you saw and what you felt taking that in that's a lot of fun you know like i said earlier you get to see things that maybe not everybody else gets to see because you're you know you're constantly moving around I, I swear I walked like 10 or 15 miles throughout the whole weekend, just circling and circling and circling all the way around. 
Um, one of the cool things that I really liked was what they did at Long Creek with the uh, meet and greets with uh, people like Matt and with uh, Matt mm-hmm. Fry, Fry's on the side, um, with Mason, with Blue Line, um, and with Bats Off Road. That was that was really cool to to get everybody in one place and say, hey, you've seen these guys on YouTube or on Facebook or, you know, you're a part of their organization. Um, you can come here and talk to them and buy their shirts mm-hmm. and, you know, hear their stories and stuff. So taking pictures of that was really cool. It, it's always cool to um, – you know, see local celebrities, as I like to call them, get to meet their fans and take pictures of them. And uh, it, it's it's really cool to see that. So that was one of my favorite things to to take pictures of. Well, the, one of my favorite pictures that you took was this one. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. That was that pretty much um, I probably that pretty that much today. says it all about my weekend. I cooked more bacon that weekend than I've probably cooked in my whole life combined. It was, it was a lot, a lot of bacon. But it's and, bacon. Uh, <laughs> that was the bacon bro pose that I did with Nathan there when I saw him pointing the camera at me. And uh, that was, that was a good time. Good time. Every time I came by, you had something else for me to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I was, well, that was I the was whole always... idea. And I appreciate you coming by to eat it. But uh, Yeah. It's, it seemed like I was always kind of on a mission. Every time I'd go by, I'd look over and you'd be cooking something and I'd be like, man, I need to stop, but I gotta, mm-hmm. I gotta get to the restroom and get back or something. It just didn't <laughs> seem like, you know, there was enough time to visit with everybody, but yeah, yeah, it smells good for sure. Yeah. And Kara said she likes stalking me with the gladiator RC car. Um, <laughs> Yes. She was uh, <laughs> over at the Long Creek booth, and I was cooking, and I saw this gladiator pull up almost uh, at my feet. Yeah, and I was like, I know she's around here somewhere, and I couldn't find her. And I was looking around, and finally we met eyes, and I saw her over there. But Kara, you are a master at driving that thing. Uh, you and Matt both were taking yeah. it between the legs of scottles and between the legs of kids i never seen anything like that it was it was so neat um, I, about, I about face planted when she parked that thing right in front of me when i was walking back to the booth i didn't realize what was going on until i was about to step on it and then it, i went to step over it and it moved again and i was just almost went down <laughs> yeah yeah it was neat and another another thing that that i noticed there was tons of dogs dogs mm-hmm. everywhere oh, yeah. and yeah, all kinds of dogs. Uh, the coolest dog and i did not upload a picture of this the coolest dog was the i think it was a bloodhound that was oh, riding the in the trailer yeah it had the goggles the blood yes. or a basset hound or something yeah it was a bloodhound or basset hound they, first time i saw him they were walking he was walking them and uh they were oh oh, oh yeah, you know, oh, yeah. just yeah. had the best bark and the bellies were dragging the ground. The ears were dragging the ground. And I thought, that reminds me of me. You know, that's going to be me when I get old. And um, and then he comes by on this stand-up two-wheel scooter pulling this uh, little trailer with the dog in it. And it has the goggles on. Yeah. And that was the coolest thing. I just got such a big kick out of that guy. That was That was so neat. Love seeing all the all the animals out there playing around the kids and different things like that. So there were so many uh, dogs. Was, there were more dogs so than I've ever dogs. seen any other year. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Kayla said, "I'm not missing out on the cider from Artemis next year." Heard it was amazing. Yeah, Me it was either. good. Me it either. was good. Uh, it's uh, Jeff said she ran over Mason with it when she, when they were standing at the Long Creek booth. Um, yeah, well, it's it's not hard to run over Mason. He's kind of like a, a statue that can't doesn't move very fast. So, um, <laughs> you know, if you head it in his direction, he is not going to move. Here asked, where was Brutus? His name is Bruiser, not Brutus. Um, oh. Bruiser stayed with Nanny because of all the other dogs. Bruiser is is great with when he's by himself, but when there's other dogs, it would have been a nightmare. So, uh, Bruiser stayed with Nanny. Uh, that's where he was. Kara, thanks for asking about Bruiser. Yeah, we 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 had to send our dogs to the puppy motel because it just we just too knew busy. that just being too busy, we wouldn't be able to, you know, do do be active with them. So, yeah, you um, Bruiser's high maintenance. 
Um, when I've got him by myself, he's great. Um, I had him for seven days in Colorado by myself last year. And every afternoon about three o'clock, he would sit at the bottom of the ladder and whine to go up in the rooftop tent. <laughs> loved it. Up there. Loved it. And he's great. He travels well, uh, but he, he needs all of the attention. And so when there's other people, other dogs, it's just, it's not happening. It's not happening. And I knew I wouldn't get anything done or see anybody or talk to anybody. So it just, it just wasn't happening. Oh, we have a dog coming in. Yep. Who's this, Nathan? This is Shadow. <laughs> Shadow. Oh, Shadow's needing some attention. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. He likes going camping too, but like they said, he, he would have just been all over the place and saying hi to everybody and getting everybody muddy and just, <laughs> would have not been a great time for him. Tony's he having fun. trouble with his. He, he's camera shy. And he won't up there. <laughs> she just about she just about knocked the tripod down. This oh no, there she is. There she is. Just, <laughs> this is our big girl. She's crazy. Oh my goodness. Well, Sadie, she's wild. I'm not gonna I'm not going to give myself a hernia and try to get Bruiser up here. So y'all just, y'all can look at pictures of him on my Instagram, but <laughs> that's awesome. I loved it. They loved all the dogs. I think it was great. And it truly shows how much of a family type event that this, that this rendezvous is, uh, you know, with all yeah. the kids, uh, everybody's showing the next generation that, uh, you know, teaching them to love this lifestyle. Uh, I think it's great. Uh, bringing your bringing your dog because dogs are part of the family and that's just that's just the way it is um tell me uh we had we had certain expectations going into this what was tony arlo what was your takeaway from rendezvous this year what 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 did what did you personally get out of it that you can share with us tonight Uh, well, for me, uh, this was the first time I really had a chance to to uh, interact a little bit with the uh, you know the group of people that that put this thing on, yes. and it really is an eye opener as to how much work that goes involved. It's involved that goes into it. Mm -hmm. So it's you know, you, I mean, while you appreciate every other year, you appreciate it, and it's a great event. But this year, you know, I had I had the opportunity to visit with Brad more. It kind of been a, a group setting, and uh, I just, uh, you know, kind of puts a new appreciation for me on on the the work that goes into, yeah, you know, putting on a, an event like this. It's just it's amazing. Yeah. True. Arla, what was your takeaway? Oh, gosh. Um, just getting to build, you know, stronger relationships and, and, and friendships, new friendships. Um, you know, getting to network a lot more this year than previous years. Mm -hmm. You know, work in the booth, you get to meet, um, you know, a lot of people that you wouldn't meet if you were just out as a spectator just to, to walk around. Um so for me that that was a big plus i i mean i met a lot of, a lot of new people and you know that are now friends yeah nathan it's, what it's about family. you yeah to build on what i was saying you know as a photographer you're constantly like i've said walking around taking pictures of everything and i had this experience at uh, the big iron overland rally too was you're always walking around to each booth and without, you know, being a photographer, I probably would have skipped over some of them because I either didn't know the people or, you know, I'm not interested in a, a van or something. So I might not have went and talked to those guys. Um, but one really cool experience that I had was at the Extrusion Overland booth, um, which, again, is one of those booths that, you know, I would have looked at it and said, hey, that's cool. And probably walked by and not talked to those guys. But one of the owners, I think his kid was you know, like an unofficial salesperson. So I walk by, I'm taking pictures of the bed rack and everything. And this kid just comes up and hands me a business card. And he starts telling me all about this extrusion overland bed rack and how it works. He starts pulling the sides off of it and the slides and everything. And uh, he says, do you know um, 
one of their competitors, he said, well, we're better than them. And <laughs> that, was, that was really cool just to be able to oh, talk to that kid for like 10 minutes and take pictures. I, I took some pictures of him actually, you know, showing me around that bed rack and that was a really cool experience. So just talking to everybody, every booth and getting to know people that I wouldn't have you know, mm-hmm. talked to before. Cause I'm really not that much of a social butterfly. So um, just, you know, talking to people about their stuff and, you know, what they do and, and overlanding and taking pictures of their, their gear and what they're selling was, was really cool. Yeah. Well, as for me, the, the takeaway is pretty much what it is every year. It's, you know, that it's, it's a great event. Uh, you get to see some of the coolest rigs, uh, the things that you lay down when you go to sleep at night and dream about, you get to see at this place. I mean, there is something for everybody at this, um, you know, I, all the 60 series land cruisers that pulled through there. I've, I've dreamed about owning one of those for years. Um, and you know, all the, the cool gladiators and, and all the cool rigs, uh, 50,000 Tacomas. I mean, they're just one of every kind coming through there. Uh, it's cool. The prizes that they give away yeah. are, are incredible. It's amazing how many things that they give away. It took hours to give all this stuff away. Um, the place is beautiful. Even though the colors, the fall colors had come out yet, um, it's still a beautiful place. Uh, but the thing that I take away every year, and this picture that you took says it all for me, this one here. The people that you only get to see a couple times a year, you get to spend time with. And, yeah. you know, these, these are not people that you see every day. These are not people that you work with. These are not people um, that you live beside. These are not your neighbors. These are the people that you talk to on Facebook and Instagram and the people that 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 you have become friends with over the years that you don't get to see every day. You get to see these people and spend time with them and build that relationship deeper than it ever was. And, you know, even though, like you said, uh, Tony, earlier, even though we didn't get to to hang out as much as we could, there were people that we did get to do that with. Yeah. And and to strengthen that bond um with with those people during that time is priceless yeah. to me yeah. because that, that that can't be replaced you're one thing that we're never promised is time and especially time with each other and that time that you spend around the fire getting to know those people a little better sure we we met a lot of new people and, and i love meeting new people i love talking to new people i love people that that come up and say hey uh uh, I, I listen to your show and I love your show, man. That's awesome. Uh, that nothing is, is, uh, comparable to that, but the time that we spend with our friends and getting to know them when we only get to see them two or three times a year, that yeah. that's almost to me like Thanksgiving dinner at mom's. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's like Christmas dinner at, at grandma's house because that's those people that you, that you, that's family that you don't really get to spend that much time with. And that's, that was my takeaway. And that's why I love this event so much. It's so family oriented. It's, it's such, um, it's oriented towards family and everybody being together. And even though they were cram packed, even though they tore up the roads, even though it rained the whole time, we still had that takeaway. Uh, we still had that time where we were able to spend with each other. Uh, all except for the guy who got mad because he didn't get his money back and spread the word that the event was canceled. Shame on you. Shame no, on you. I, I didn't hear anything about him. You know. Shame on it. Well, we have reached um, about the time when we like to say goodbye. Uh, our hour limit is about up and everybody's attention span is just about done. Uh, so um, any final words to anybody out there, Nathan, I want to thank you for coming on and everybody. This is Nathan's um, logo for his photography. Make sure y'all look him up on Instagram and, um, and whatever else you got. Do you have a, you have a website, Nathan? Yeah. Nathan Anderson photo.com. Nathan Anderson all the, all of, you can actually see, all of the rendezvous photos on there, all almost 1400 of them are on there. Wow. If you want to go skim Excellent. through them. Excellent. 
Tony, Arla, make sure you tell McKenna, thank you for coming on. I appreciate y'all coming on. Make sure everybody go to batsoffroad.com and you. Uh, check you out on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all the good stuff. Thank, um, thank you. You got any, uh, do y'all have any um, trips planned up, planned that y'all are uh, going to be going to anytime soon? So uh, we're going to do the um, Patreon run with Matt and Kara. Yeah, we're going to go on that run with Matt and Kara next weekend. I'm going to do the just a, a little expo at Lewis and Clark in Springdale. Um, Saturday. And then uh, we're looking at a trip with uh, Chad Morris of the Joplin uh, Jeep Junkies uh, at the end of December. Hopefully we get to make that run through uh, uh, New Mexico and Big Bend area. So mm -hmm. really looking forward to that. Awesome. Um, awesome. A couple other things in the works, but nothing firm. nothing firm yet. So Firm but flexible. That's firm right. but flexible. <laughs> Always. Always. Uh, the older I get, the more, the less firm and the less flexible I get uh, <laughs> body wise, but with yeah. plans, they got to be firm and flexible. Right. So Nathan, you got any, you got any trips coming up? You got any plans coming up in the future? I don't actually, I don't have any, you know, solid plans for the rest of the year. So, uh, but you nice are available the... for people to book so you can take their picture at any time yeah, so yeah you want nathan's calendar is wide open if you need pictures done no uh senior pictures junior pictures kindergarten pictures whatever you need rig pictures senior he'll pictures it. he'll take he'll take <laughs> yeah so oh, yeah. so there is a comment there gecko question mark that's uh something that uh, is kind of kind of evolving the the gecko lander uh trailers that uh yeah we're the going to be the u.s sales rep for those uh, there's still awesome. a few hurdles to get over uh to get get them in the u.s but uh hopefully some of these ports will open up and get things moving i hope so i hope so well um aaron just sent me a message today all the howling moon stuff arrived from south africa so uh, i am fun. so pumped this Can't saturday i go pick up a new tent uh, at Artemis, so uh, so pumped about that. Can't wait for everything in my life to completely change. It's almost like buying a new house. Um, <laughs> I'm going from a like between a twin bed and a full bed to a king size bed, and uh, it's it's just going to be amazing. So uh, getting stuff imported right now is such a headache, but yes. hey, the wait is worth it. The wait is worth it. Well, hey, everybody, uh, thank you all so much for coming on here. I, if you tuned in, I appreciate you being here. I want to invite you to take about an hour break and then get back on with Wonder Wonder Repeat. Uh, Kara's yes. going to have her show, and it's going to be amazing, and I know that you'll want to be up for that. So make sure you tune in on her, on her Facebook page and also Ozark Overland Adventures YouTube channel, and that she will be live with that. And I know that you will love that. So wherever you are, whatever you do, live life the best life that you can do it. Make sure that you take the time to bro pose and get out there and love this life. Look out for number one and don't step in number two. Number two. Have a great week. Dance, baby, dance, baby. Thank you for watching. Professor. 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 Professor and friends. Sponsored by U.S. Action Tracks. Winds and Solar. More Expo. Big Iron Overland Rally. Blue Cell Coffee Roasters. Long Creek Overland Apparel. And our good friends at Artemis Overland Hardware. Thank you for watching.